The Himalayas are the highest mountain range in the world, and their sheer size has a significant impact on the planet, mostly through influencing the weather. Restricting airflow and the circulation of the atmosphere over Asia has a big impact on the climate, but also creates a knock-on effect that influences the weather as far as Africa and Europe as well. Despite their prominence and effect on the planet, they are not actually very old. In fact, they are one of the youngest mountain ranges in the world, and these hundreds of miles of mountains simply didn't exist when the dinosaurs were still around. This is because they formed when the Indian subcontinent collided with Asia, and before the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs, India was a large island separate from Asia. Towards the end of the Cretaceous and the whole dinosaur era, the fossils of dinosaurs and other ancient animals found in India were markedly different to the ones found in Asia. For example, around 90 to 65 million years ago, the largest carnivorous dinosaur in India were a group known as the Abelosaurids, with short deep skulls and tiny forearms, like Carnotaurus and Majungasaurus. Abelosaurids were the dominant carnivorous dinosaurs found in the southern hemisphere at the time, with their fossils first being discovered in Argentina, but now have remains known across all of the southern continents. In the rest of Asia, fossil discoveries have shown its ecosystem was much more in line with the northern hemisphere. The assembly of predators were in a lot of ways more advanced than the abelosaurids, and more closely related to birds, like Tarbosaurus, a tyrannosaur, and the dromaeosaurs, like Velociraptor. Tyrannosaurs and dromaeosaurs, or raptors, being the dominant meat-eating dinosaurs in the northern hemisphere during the late Cretaceous. However, it wasn't just carnivores, and there were many unique plants and animals endemic to the north and the south. For instance, the leaves and trees of southern continents were stripped and eaten by a largely sauropod-dominated ecosystem, whereas the north had a more diverse group of herbivorous dinosaurs, containing sauropods, but also many species of hadrosaur and ceratopsians. Hadrosaurs were very rare in the south, and it isn't clear if ceratopsians even made it that far at all. Ancient animals are arranged this way because when the giant supercontinent Pangaea broke up around 200 million years ago, it separated into two smaller, albeit still very large, continents known as Laurasia and Gondwana before breaking apart completely. Gondwana became completely cut off from the northern continents for many millions of years, making it either impossible or at least very difficult for animals to travel north. Gondwana was composed of all the southern continents, Africa, South America, Antarctica, and Australia, that remained either connected or close enough for dispersion for many millions of years after this, meaning that fossils from the Cretaceous period from these continents tend to share a commonality. The Indian subcontinent was also a part of Gondwana before breaking off and becoming its own island around 120 million years ago. However, because it was part of the supercontinent for many millions of years before separating, like the southern continents, it inherited a lot of plants and animals first, and so had more of a Gondwanan ecosystem. By the end of the Cretaceous, the largest carnivorous dinosaur in India was an abelosaurid named Rajasaurus, and the subcontinent had a high number of sauropods, just like other former Gondwana continents. There have also been fragmentary fossil discoveries in India that some researchers believe to be the remains of a stegosaur, the family that Stegosaurus belongs to, that was named Dravidosaurus, although this is controversial. The significance of this, if it's true, is that Stegosaurs, including Stegosaurus, are very old dinosaurs, mostly living in the Jurassic and very early Cretaceous period, being much older than the likes of Tyrannosaurs and Titanosaurs, etc. So by the time India had separated as an island in the mid-Cretaceous, a Stegosaur would have been like a living fossil. It has been argued that due to the fact India was isolated, it may have had a population of stegosaurs that clung on after their extinction everywhere else. The problem is that Dravidosaurus remains are incredibly fragmentary, and some other evidence of stegosaurs in India, like footprints, aren't very conclusive either. Till more fossils are discovered, the identification of Dravidosaurus remains mysterious. Gondwana began to break up around 180 million years ago at the beginning of the Jurassic. Africa and India broke away first, and then around 120 million years ago, India broke away from Antarctica and Australia, but it wasn't alone. For some time after India's breakaway from Gondwana, it was still connected to Madagascar, making an island together. Madagascar broke away from India around 88 million years ago, leaving India alone completely isolated. So the most recent landmass to be connected to Madagascar was India, not Africa, and hidden among the current animals and plants of these regions are remnants of this ancient connection. One of India's strangest inhabitants is the purple frog, that lives in the south of India and has an incredibly unusual appearance, with a pointed nose, bloated body and purplish skin colour. 
the purple frog is not very closely related to any other frogs found in India, and genetic study has found that their closest living relatives are actually a unique group of frogs named the Seychelles Island Frogs. The Seychelles are a very remote group of islands found in the middle of the Indian Ocean, thousands of miles from India, and only slightly closer to Madagascar, but was once part of the same landmass. The connection has also shown itself in the beetle population, specifically a family of aquatic beetles known as the Hydrophilidae. This family is found worldwide, but there are two specific lineages that are proven to be closely related, one living in the mountains of southern India and Sri Lanka, and the other being found in the mountains of Madagascar. However, there really aren't that many examples of animals that show India and Madagascar's history as one island, despite being connected for around 30 million years. Most of Madagascar's plants and animals have come from the African mainland, especially mammals like lemurs or fufusa and their relatives, but also some other organisms like the many species of trees, shrubs and reptiles like crocodiles and chameleons have all come from Africa across the ocean. The lack of related animals between Madagascar and India is because since their breakup there has been a tremendous amount of geological upheaval. Firstly, the global mass extinction that wiped out the dinosaurs, the KPG extinction, occurred when both landmasses were still islands. But also, around the same time, India was experiencing its own smaller extinction event caused by seismic activity. The Deccan Traps found in western India is one of the largest basalt formations in the world, which are created by the cooling of ancient lava. There is evidence that this caused substantial damage to the ecosystems of India, and maybe further. Finally, as Madagascar has remained an island into the present, it has still retained a very unique biodiversity, but India of course didn't, and eventually connected to another landmass, drastically altering its native animals. When India connected to Asia, or was just very close, there was an interchange of species immigrating and emigrating north and south between both continents. But the exchange was asymmetrical. As is usually the case with the smaller landmass, its animals tend to be more vulnerable to change, and so most of India's modern fauna is dominated by animals that originated in Eurasia. It's not too surprising that the handful of species that have survived from Gondwana or Madagascar are evolutionary oddballs. The purple frog doesn't just look unusual, and also has a strange lifestyle. Unlike almost any other frog in the world, it spends the vast majority of its time underground eating termites, and other creatures that are found underground. The aquatic beetles are also specialists, with both lineages specialising to live in fast moving water like waterfalls. Because these creatures were occupying such extraordinary niches, it is less likely there would have been an ecologically similar animal from Asia that could have outcompeted them. The KPG extinction occurred 66 million years ago, and the Indian plate collided with the Eurasian plate sometime between 50 to 55 million years ago, so there was a period after the mass extinction where India was still an island. However, there is a small history of mammals on India during this time, even though India was still isolated. Some of these mammal remains were of very primitive mammal groups that are now extinct, that were more common when the dinosaurs were still around, and so could have actually been survivors of the KPG extinction, and had just been on India the whole time. However, some of the fossils are from creatures that would have originated outside of India and somehow managed to find a way there, like modern placental mammals. For instance, very ancient rodent relatives and primates have been discovered from this time, but also the fossils of a hyenodont. Hyenodonts were highly successful mammalian predators that were the dominant carnivorous mammals until the carnivorans. Animals like felines and canines took over. It's named Indo-Hyenodon and was most closely related to the African hyenodonts, meaning that it is likely that this is where many of the mammals came from. It's possible that as India was travelling northwards towards Asia, it may have been very close to the Horn of Africa, allowing for rafting events, or may have had brief connections with Africa, or maybe even Europe, that was still a group of islands at this point. Although India's modern ecosystem is dominated by animals that travelled in from Asia, and Indian animals were generally less successful at travelling into Asia, there are fossils that show that India was important for the evolution of many animal groups. One example is the odd-toed ungulates, which include animals like horses, rhinos, and tapirs, as there are fossils of a very primitive relative known from India named Cambatherium that dated to when it was still an island. Also, 53 million years ago, India was home to a very small mammal that may have been ancestral to rabbits and hares. Despite many similarities, rabbits are actually not rodents, and are actually fairly distantly related, and are grouped together with hares and their mountain cousins pikas under the name Lagomorpha. The earliest lagomorphs discovered are known from Mongolia, but the ankle bones of the Indian specimen show that it may have been an ancestor or closely related to the more advanced lagomorphs like rabbits and hares. 
However, it is inconclusive if these animal groups originated in India because they both have fossils known in Asia from around the same time, and it is possible that as India was closing in on Asia, small islands could have been forming, allowing some crossing between the continents. However, there are definitely some mammals that originated in India and then spread out and colonised the rest of the world, and they were hoofed animals. Specifically, they were aquatic hoofed animals, whales and dolphins. The very earliest whale ancestors, like Indohyus and Pachycetus, are only known from the Indian subcontinent, and in fact whale fossils aren't seen anywhere else in the world for the first 5 million years or so of their evolution. It is likely that whales like Pachycetus and Indohyus were nowhere near strong enough swimmers to cross oceans, and so were confined to Greater India. Even the Ambulocetids, slightly more aquatic ancestors, haven't been discovered outside of India or Pakistan either. The first whales to be found outside of India and spread globally were called the Protocetids, that adapted a whole host of features that made them much stronger swimmers than their ancestors, allowing them to leave the subcontinent and cross oceans. So although most of the animals from India's island past have gone extinct, especially mammals, it was still the source of the largest mammals or animals that have ever lived. Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes to all my patrons, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.